We all know Antarctica, the South Pole, penguins and lots and lots of ice. However, there is another side to Antarctica we know a little less about. The history, who travelled there first, and the hidden life that may be lurking. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three recent Antarctic discoveries. Scientists are investigating warm caves under Antarctica which could support secret life. The world is often full of surprises, but one you might not expect is if I told you that in some parts of Antarctica it is warm enough that you would need only a t-shirt. Well, according to Dr. Keridwen Fraser, there is a place just like that. Antarctica's Ross Island is home to Mount Erebus, an active volcano. It appears that over several years, the steam from the volcano managed to hollow out caves under the ice, producing a network of surprisingly warm caves. Dr. Keridwen Fraser from the ANU Fenner School of Environment and Society says that a forensic analysis of soil samples in the caves revealed a number of unexpected DNA samples from algae, moss and small animals. She said that it can reach up to 25 degrees Celsius in these caves, making it comfortable for small wildlife. Furthermore, in areas where the ice above is thinner, some light peeps through into the caves. While most of the DNA was quickly identified as plants and animals we already know to be elsewhere in Antarctica, not all the DNA could be matched up. This means we could potentially have new species of plants and animals living beneath the ice in Antarctica. Fraser's co-researcher, Professor Craig Carey from the University of Waikato in New Zealand, says that the previous research has shown different bacteria and fungi have been in Antarctica's caves, and he explained that these findings did not rule out the possibility that there may be more plants and animals also lurking within the caves. Unfortunately for us, these underground or under ice networks are not the most accessible nor the easiest to explore. Yet we do not even know just how many of these cave systems exist, just that an exciting possibility to uncover new life is present. Antarctica was on fire 75 million years ago. I bet when you hear Antarctica, you do not picture gorgeous forests and pretty green views, though long ago, that is exactly what it was like. In the Cretaceous period between 100 million and 66 million years ago, the James Ross Island was on fire, according to scientists who have discovered fossilized plants containing charcoal. These fossils date back to the dinosaurs, and during the Cretaceous period, there was a known high fire era where wildfires would often spread, setting things alight. We did not realize that these fires made their way all the way to Antarctica, our now famously icy region. This research has been published in the scientific journal Polar Research and is the first to identify a fossil as macro charcoal from the James Ross Island. This also means they are the first team to find some sort of confirmation that paleo wildfires occurred in the Campanian vegetation in the Santa Marta Formation. The rolling green hills and the tall growing trees did once take up the now icy, frosty, watery landscape. This does not mean that Antarctica was any more habitable than it is now. The lush green paradise was not quite that peaceful. Active volcanoes seem to have erupted, starting wildfires that tore through the continent. Flaviana Jorge de Lima, a paleobiologist at the Federal University of Pernambuco in Recife, Brazil, and the lead author of the study said, This discovery expands the knowledge about the occurrence of vegetation fires during the Cretaceous period, showing that such episodes were more common than previously imagined. The fossil samples that were found were analysed by the team under a stereo microscope, a microscope with a relatively low-power stereoscopic view, meaning the depth of the fossil can be examined too. This meant the team were able to investigate the fossils and study individual microscopic structures such as cell walls, meaning the team could confirm that the fossils were made from charred plants, confirming a fire had taken place. Tectonic movements during the Cretaceous period meant a great deal of volcanic activity which the research team believe could have ignited the wildfire that caused the charred plant fossils. This explanation is only applicable to the James Ross Island, but the Nelson Island in West Antarctica also exhibits signs of wildfires too. 
Things are not always as they seem. Where I stands now, there once were fires raging. What might the future of our planet look like to those staring back at history? Maori travelled to Antarctica at least 1,000 years before Europeans. The Maori people are the indigenous population of New Zealand. They arrived in New Zealand between 1320 and 1350 in canoe voyages, travelling from East Polynesia. Having lived separately from the outside world, in isolation with just each other on the island, the Maori people developed a culture distinct from other Eastern Polynesian cultures. While these differences in languages, performance, crafts and mythology are all noted differences, what is less acknowledged is their travel to Antarctica, which new research suggests the group did more than 1,000 years before Europeans did. Relatively recent research suggests that Maori people may have reached Antarctica as early as the 7th century, centuries before the first European missions would begin venturing out towards Antarctica. The new study, published in the Journal of the Royal Society of New Zealand, takes a new look at history, offering a fresh perspective as the previously overlooked pieces of historical evidence have connected some dots and filled in historical gaps. Some of the newly considered sources include Maori oral narratives, events documented through carvings and weavings, and what is referred to as grey literature. The lead author of the study, Priscilla Wehi, a conservation biologist at New Zealand Government Research Institute, Manaki Wanua, explained that piecing all these clues together very clearly shows a link to Antarctica and that these links have been present since the earliest forms of voyaging. A number of oral or spoken Maori traditional tales recount the early adventures in the exploration of the Antarctic. Some of the Maori tribal groups, including Ngati Raua and Te Atiawa, share the journey of an explorer called Hui Te Rangiora, who led his vessel to Antarctica, where he found a foggy, misty and dark place not seen by the sun. These oral narratives share stories not just of the Antarctic landscape, including icebergs, but also descriptions of marine mammals. Until now, a lot of our understanding of the Antarctic and expeditions to explore it have been focused on the missions and accomplishments set out by European teams. Many historical sources even cite the first vessel to spot the Antarctic continent as being a Russian voyage in the January of 1820, despite the much earlier descriptions we now know were gathered by the Maori people. Priscilla Wehi told the New Zealand Herald that some of the Maori people have been criticising this date for years now, knowing they had prior records of visiting and exploring the Antarctic. Wehi has made it very clear that she and her team are not presenting a huge revelation, nor do they claim to be making the discovery themselves. She stated, We didn't discover this. It's a known narrative. Our job was to bring together all the information and communicate it to the world. Some other researchers who are involved in the study agree with the likelihood that our history books need amending, offering the justification that the Maori community both lived in relative close proximity to the Antarctic continent and were highly skilled in seafaring, making it a high possibility that the population found and explored the land before the European voyages made it over. The new study does not look at the timeline and recount the personal stories and information about the Maori voyages. The research paper also takes a look at the relationship and connections between Polynesian people and Antarctica too. For example, a Maori sailor named Te Atu was part of a trip in 1840, led by the United States Exploring Expedition. More modern research, including Maori people taking on roles in research departments studying ecology and climate change. In the past, Many of the sources of this study, for example carvings, songs and oral traditions, have been dismissed by academics. However, within these mediums, the Maori people kept records of knowledge on astronomy, on navigating the oceans and of geography, all encapsulating the historical knowledge of the population too. Now, many of these techniques are rightfully acknowledged academically as indigenous techniques to protect knowledge, meaning we can use them to help aid our understanding of various cultures and their histories. Some of the Maori artists who visited Antarctica have left small reminders throughout. In 1960, a figurehead was carved for Scott Base, the Antarctic research station New Zealand has in the continent. It was in 2013 when a carver from Ngai Tahu created an engraved post known by, when translated to English, 
as navigator of the heavens. The base contained decorative features such as celestial navigation aspects, carvings indicating the spirit of exploration, and it is all shown through stars, waves, water and animal depictions. Where he said she hopes that in light of this study, Maori people will be included in more programs and studies related to Antarctica, where cultural knowledge and information can be shared and included too. As we learn more about Antarctica, we learn more about our world, the people responsible for discoveries, the animals that live amongst us, and the history of our planet. But what do you make of these fascinating discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.